Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 22 of the chapter Hello Ilkanes and Hello Arenes. In the past few videos, we have been discussing the nucleophilic substitution reactions of Hello Ilkanes. And in order to understand the mechanism of these and why the products are formed, we needed to understand the stereochemical aspects. And I have been explaining the various stereochemical aspects, that is what is plain polarized light, what is optical activity, uh, what are enantiomers, and uh, what is molecular asymmetry, what is chirality, what is inversion of configuration, what is uh, retention of configuration, and what is racemization. You understood all the stereochemical aspects. Now having understood the stereochemical part, let us come back to the SN1 and SN2 mechanisms, that is the nucleophilic substitution reactions. So now actually in this video we are going to follow the we are going to be doing the topic the stereochemical aspects of nucleophilic substitution reactions. When I told you about the SN2 mechanism, I explained to you that when SN2 mechanism takes place, an inversion of the configuration takes place. And we took this example where we said if this is the nucleophile which is attacking and the green uh, circle is the halogen that is leaving. If the central pink dot is the carbon and which is tetrahedrally arranged, the chiral carbon uh, or the optically active, these are optically active haloalkanes. And the optically active haloalkanes, the uh, chiral carbon would be attached to four different groups, one of which is the halogen. So when nucleophilic substitution takes place, the halogen is replaced by another nucleophile. And when it follows SN2 mechanism, when we say SN2, it means that in the same step, there are two species that are involved in the reaction. That is, at the same time, both the reactants are attached to each other. So we say both of them, both the reactants are reacting together. And that is the reason why we call it the nucleo, <coughs> sorry, nucleophilic substitution 2, that is uh, SN2 reaction. So when a nucleophile attacks the, uh, the haloalkane, the halogen is supposed to leave and the nucleophile is supposed to add up to the molecule. So what happens if this is the tetrahedral arrangement of the haloalkane, this is the halogen, the central carbon and the other three bonds which are attached to it and they are kind of pointing towards or you can imagine the umbrella, the, if this is an umbrella, this is the handle of the umbrella and that's the shade of the umbrella. So the umbrella is in this direction. And as the nucleophile comes and attaches itself to the central carbon, at the same time, the uh, halogen is leaving. So this bond is partially formed and this bond is partially broken. So both of them are actually at this time in the intermediate stage, both of them are attached to the central carbon. And these three bonds, as a result, each bond is actually a pair of electrons. So each pair of electrons repels the other pairs of electrons. So as a pair of electrons is are coming from this side, another pair of electrons is present here, which has still not left. Now these are repelling and those are repelling. These two electrons, which are the, ox the nucleophile and the central carbon, these two would also be repelling and these two are also repelling. So these three bonds are kind of pushed into a plane. So they are made into, you can imagine a triangular plane in the center. You know, imagine a triangle in the center. One nucleophile is coming from here. The three bonds, they form a triangle. This is a rectangle, but uh, it forms a triangle. One bond coming from here and the entering group and the leaving group. And all other bonds have arranged themselves in an equilateral triangle in the center. Now what happens, this is the intermediate stage. After the intermediate stage, the halogen leaves, that is this bond breaks completely and this bond is completely formed. So the role of these two electrons, the repulsion caused by these two electrons, when this, the uh, halogen, uh, the halide ion, it moves away, the nucleophile moves away, it takes these two electrons with it. 
Therefore, now the pair of electrons is not there to repel anything, but these electrons are sp still repelling these three bonds. So what happens as a result of this? When the product is formed, the halogen leaves and these three bonds are pushed by this pair of electrons towards the other side. So now in the product, the umbrella appears as if the handle was, is on this side and the, sh the shade of the umbrella is in the other direction such a configuration we say the umbrella is inverted and that is why such configuration is known as an inverted configuration so it leads to the inversion when sn2 mechanism takes place sn2 mechanism of an optically active halo alkane takes place it leads to the inversion of the configuration and your knowledge of stereochemistry now helps you understand what inversion of configuration is and why it takes place because of the repulsion of electrons of the bonded uh, of the at, uh, of the nucleophile which is uh, getting bonded to the central carbon now in optically active halides the sn2 mechanism leads to inversion of configuration now an example is here take a look this is bromine this is this is octane so this is 2 bromo octane is the molecule right the second carbon has got the bromine so the second carbon is the chiral carbon so the second carbon has bromine so to the second carbon on one side you have ch3 you have a hydrogen and you have c6h13 so this is the minus sign represents that it is levorotatory so you have levorotatory 2 bromo octane and when this is hydrolyzed, when it is, when you make it uh, react with OH negative, the nucleophile OH negative now attacks it by SN2 mechanism and leads to the inversion of configuration. So the BR which was on this side, in the product, after following the SN2 mechanism, the OH will be on this side. Do you see this? The bromine was here, but the OH is on the other side. It led to the inversion of the configuration. Now, with the inversion, the compound that you get here would be octane to all and it would be dextrorotatory. This would be plus octane to all would be your compound. The OH group is attached to the second carbon. So the bromine was replaced by the OH and therefore you get octane to all, which is also optically active but it is the inversion, the, the configuration has inverted. If this species was levorotatory, then the product would be, would be dextrorotatory by the same angle. So this shows that when SN2 mechanism is followed, the reaction leads to the product which, is, which has an inverted configuration. How about SN1 now? When an SN1 substitution takes place, the SN1 mechanism is called SN1 because it takes place in two steps. We don't call it 1 because it has two steps. We call it 1 because in each step, one of the reactants is the rate determining, is, is the reactant which is undergoing change. Only one of the reactants. And that is why we call it SN1. At one time, you have only one reactant participating. When SN1 mechanism takes place, in the first step, a carbocation is formed. That is, the haloalkane first undergoes a change, that is, it loses the halogen and results in the formation of a carbocation. So, do you look at this uh, here. This is the reaction that is taking place. You have bromine and bromine at the second carbon. And what is this compound? This is bromobutane right you have methyl here and you have c2 ethyl group here and this should be a carbon so to the second carbon you have bromine attached hydrogen ethyl group and methyl group so the second carbon is the chiral carbon and it is optically active in the first step when it undergoes sn1 mechanism it turns into it loses the halogen first in the first step when it loses the halogen it turns into a carbocation now as soon as the halogen is lost these four bonds were attached, were forming a tetrahedral shape. These four bonds were in a tetrahedral form. Let us say that one of these leaves, out of these, this tetrahedron, any one of these leaves. So when one of these leaves, these three bonds were bent backwards because of the repulsion by these two electrons of this fourth bond. 
but the moment this one uh, that is the halogen atom leaves with its electrons now there are no electrons to repel these three bonds so they would not be pushed backwards they would become three corners of an of a regular triangle right they would become they would occupy three corners of a triangle because there is no no bond repelling them to push them to the back to form a tetrahedral shape so we find that when the carbocation is formed the carbocation has a carbon in the center which is not chiral because it's a symmetrical structure it is not asymmetrical so it forms a symmetrical or an achiral carbocation and now since it forms a, a, an achiral carbocation the OH negative which has to come and attack it has a choice either it attacks from this direction and pushes these in that side or it attacks from the other direction because after all this is symmetrical the OH negative can come and attack from either of the directions if it attacks from this direction these three bonds will be pushed in that direction but if it attacks from this direction these three bonds will be pushed to this direction so you will get two products one of them would be with the bonds towards that side that is one of them would be dextrorotatory the other one would be levorotatory so whenever you have the SN1 mechanism being followed instead of getting uh, due to the formation of an achiral carbocation you have two options the attacking OH negative or the attacking nucleophile can attack from both the sides so what happens this is the carbocation this is the attacking nucleophile OH negative it can attack from front it can attack from behind and when it does so you will get two conformations one would be dextrorotatory and the other would be levorotatory and these two would be enantiomers so you would get both the products the dextrorotatory butan 2 all and the levorotatory butan 2 all and since both of them the possibility of the OH negative is equal in both the directions the OH negative can attack equally from this direction and from this direction because this is absolutely symmetrical so it doesn't make a difference which direction it comes for, from so the dextrorotatory isomer and the levorotatory enantiomer both of them would be 50 50 their concentration would be equal and if you have an equal concentration of the dextrorotatory and the levorotatory form of two enantiomers what is the mixture known as it is known as a racemic mixture so we say when SN1 mechanism takes place it leads to racemization but when SN2 mechanism takes place it leads to the inversion of configuration right for these two sentences, it was important to explain the entire stereochemistry related to these two to you. So, I will repeat now what are the two main sentences that we understand from this one. What is the stereochemical aspect of nucleophilic substitution reaction? For SN2 reaction, for SN2 mechanism, the product that is formed is formed as, is, uh, it is an inverted configuration of the product formed. You get the product or the SN2 mechanism in the case of optically active halides SN2 mechanism leads to an inversion of configuration and in optically active uh, halides which follow SN1 mechanism the product that is formed is a racemic mixture or SN1 mechanism leads to racemization while SN2 mechanism leads to inversion of configuration so these were the stereochemical aspects of the nucleophilic substitution reaction with this i'll wind up today's video if you found it helpful please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now